Okay, the uh, all rusted material has been cut out and the ends cleaned and everything. And we decided to go ahead and actually remove the floor support that goes here. Uh, rather than trying to straighten those out, they're so bent up and damaged, we're just going to go ahead and fabricate brand new ones and uh, replace those at the same time. So, excellent. All right, so to reproduce this factory uh, floor reinforcement, what Joe's done is he's laid out the lines here, and you'll notice everything's sort of a wedge. That's because this itself is a wedge, and so those lines will ultimately fold up into these creases and give us this piece. All right. Nice. Looks pretty darn square on your first try to me. Mm -hmm. Very good. Close Jeff. enough for government work. Good enough. All the spot well holes have been drilled. The weld through primer's been applied on the underside, and she is ready to install. And you can see that she slips right in exactly where the factory one was at. And we'll line her up, tack her in. Then when we apply the new floor pans, they will have nice, strong support, so even a very large person can ride in the Lincoln. All right, the floor pans have been replaced. Everything's welded up nice and tight, straight as an arrow. Looking good, man. How exciting. Well, we're back to plastic hanging the car because it's time to put epoxy primer and chassis black underneath. So as you can see here, all the new floor pans and the trunk area. Suspension's been removed, the trunk area has been cut out and the metal cleaned up. I'm not gonna worry about the stuff on the sides here because we're gonna do a lot of welding and fabrication. But before we put the rear suspension system back in, I wanna get all of this nicely done in epoxy and chassis black. Let's get to it. Oh yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's a nice looking undercarriage. Sweet! Now all we need are the batteries, the motors, the inverters, etc. But anyway, looks fantastic. The uh, front end teardown is pretty much completed at this point. So as you can see here, we've removed the whole front bumper, splash shield, headlights, headlight buckets. Uh, there's your two-piece grill that came off, torsion bars, and uh, as you can see here, some of the hinge parts are uh, you know, not in the best shape. So all of this is going to get media blasted and cleaned and primered and get ready for paint. And by the way, that grill, uh, you have to actually remove both vacuum tanks from the inside the fender, the fender shields, just to remove one plate to get to one single little bolt. One bolt. That's it on both sides. Everything else accessible from the front. Anyway, gotta love these old classic cars. That's the way that I like to see parts that are going to be part of a lightning rod done by Bloodshed Motors. Look, and the good news is these pieces are in great shape. Now, just need to get them sealed and then painted whatever color we choose. So here's some of the fun you get when you do these old restorations. It turns out that this murdered out Lincoln, this grill that goes uh, in front of the windshield and between the hood has been spray painted with a rattle can and it's terrible so I started trying to sand on it to touch it up and I just finally decided to give up and just put it in the sand blaster and that's going to be a lot better to work with. I'll start with brush primer. This is the factory white paint I believe um, because underneath it is a light reddish rust colored primer but um, this is what I'm dealing with. I'm going to attempt to videotape sandblasting just a piece of this through the screen one-handed. Let's we'll see how that goes. All right, here we go. Sorry for the noise, but... And you can see that the black is coming off pretty quickly. And then you have to work on the white for quite a while. Right, the front grill, everything's been disassembled, headlight buckets, and now I've been working on the, uh, the sides of the engine bay area. I've welded in about 12 or 13 different holes, sealed them all up, 
ground them down, stripped everything on this part. We haven't done the back firewall yet because they're probably going to fabricate a false firewall there and there's no point in doing that yet. But uh, this is getting ready for me to start doing some finish work on. And now I'm struggling with these access ports that you have to leave intact for uh, getting into the front end to adjust alignment. But they're ugly and uh, just, it's not to our standards. So we've got to come up with an idea there. Fabricate some shields, fiberglass, rubber, something. We'll come up with it. To solve the problem of how we're going to cover up those huge access ports that have been cut in at the factory and then beat all the crap over the years, um, what I did was I covered the back, filled it full of great stuff, and uh, I've now shaved it down and I'm starting to apply, this one's been done once, a layer of body filler over the foam lightly to fill in all the plugs and everything. I'm going to continue to smooth that with the intention of being able to build a fiberglass mold over it, then pop it all out and clean it up and then have a fiberglass fitted cover. All right, so these molds are made and I did not document every step along the way, so I'll just show you what we did. So after I did the foam um, and cut it to form, then I used actual Bondo body filler over the form to give it a nice smooth texture. And then you can see, if I get real close, these faint stripes. Uh, I experimented with a lot of different things, but I ended up using uh, painter's tape to cover this very carefully, way out past the edges. Then I put automotive wax on the painter's tape, and that's what I used as the, uh, the, the shell. So this is essentially my mold, and this is what comes out of it, right? And so I was able to just simply pull this loose from the painter's tape because of the car wax. And uh, now I can start doing body work, cutting this down. I'm probably going to do some more resin work to build this up, make it stronger. It's three levels, three layers. But now we have what should end up being a very attractive cover for these ridiculously awful holes here. So the molds have been busted loose and all the foam dug out. As you can see, there's the rough openings. And you can see why I wanted to hide these. Look at this. Um, this is an access port for the suspension bolts that you have to use to set the alignments and things. And to get to those, you've got to come in through here. And as you can see over the years, these have just been beat to death and are extremely bent and warped. You could spend hours and hours trying to dolly these out and make them look somewhat presentable. And it's still just a, a big, ugly, gaping hole. So now, what do we have? Let's take a look. So this is the final ready for paint shield. Holes have been drilled. The rib nuts have not been placed in the firewall yet, but you can see that the uh, the wheel well rather, you can see that the holes have been drilled. So we'll pop this in and look at that. That is beautiful. Changes everything, hides all the ugly and you can still just pop those screws out to set the alignment and put them back in. Nice!